Behind the Dish is sponsored by DBAT. Check out DBAT.net for baseball and softball products, franchise information, and to find a location near you. And now your host, John Piper. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Dish. I'm John Piper, and I never saw this one coming. Uh, I traveled to Beijing, China in 2007 and had an opportunity to uh, tour what was called the Bird's Nest, became Olympic Stadium uh, in 2008, and we're sitting here live at DBAT Corporate, joined with Eli Mahan from DBAT. Welcome, Eli. Hey, glad to be here, John. Along with Mr. Steve, traveled all the way over from China. Hello, Steve. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Along with Mr. Ning. Welcome. Thank you. What What is so unique about this opportunity? Uh, is, is businesses evolving globally, especially the sports business? Uh, Ning started off as a sports journalist back in 2003, uh, covering his passion, soccer, uh, basketball, major sporting events uh, for several years, and then com- combined that in 2007 to focus on education. Uh, Ning, you saw an opportunity to start a business called Rice English, and then with, with only five years, your academy became one of the biggest in the city with over 2,000 students. Why don't we just start there, if you could tell us a little bit about how that business came about and the growth of education in China. Uh, I think uh, English language, yeah, but the marketing in China is uh, different with the uh, United States because China have 1.5 billion people, so many, many businesses is easy to develop, it's easy to make money. 11 years ago, when I started to build a rice English language economy, I think it's a, a good business because before me, nobody do English language economy for the children. All is age, only from 3 to 12. Yeah, rice is the first one. I, was I the, was the focus on teaching Young Chinese, how to speak English? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, very, yeah. very strong. Great yeah. market. Yes. Rice is the first one. I'm the first academy of rice. Until now, rice have more than 400 academies, totally more than 100,000 students. Yeah. Th- that's a phenomenal success story uh, in any country, Ning. And we were talking off air you sold that business uh, in 2012, correct? 2013. 2013, you sold that business. Yeah. But then you parlayed your passion and what you learned in the youth education business to follow your passion in sports, and you combined that learning and started a, a soccer academy. You rolled that into, uh, in 2014, you started a soccer academy. Uh, you brought in expertise from the Spanish uh, coaches, uh, brought them to China, to play soccer, teach soccer in what was called, or what is called, the Lama Soccer Academy. Uh, now you have 16 soccer academies in five cities. Another phenomenal success story. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and, and the excitement of soccer, or what, what they call football, in China. Uh, many, many people ask me why, why I sold my English language academy. Uh, I think... Uh, after I, after five min, uh, five years, my feeling about English language economy is um, in China more people they know English. They have many many way to learn English. So for the business model, I don't think the, this is uh, is so good. Great lesson for the business owners out there is once you start a business. You have to have an exit strategy. You have to understand when's a good time to get out. It sounds like you timed that well. 就是他的意思是说，呃，就是暂少了你的这个这个决策，这个是一个对一些经商的人来说是非常好的一课，因为它可以告诉你什么时候介入这个市场，同时什么时候这个市场的发展到第二个项瓶颈或者阶段的时候
So I hope in the future all the business is about education for the children. Uh, but my first job is a report, yeah, sports report in a newspaper. So I know education. Also, I do education academy five years. Uh, I know sports, so I hope I can mix two things: yeah, sports and education. This is a uh, this business sports education or sports academy. I think uh, in China. Uh, nobody do this now. Many, many people they do English language academy. I want to do a new, a new business model. Like uh, eleven years ago, I do English language academy for young people. Eli, you're a soccer fan. Can you talk uh, a little bit about the the combination of Real Madrid, the involvement uh, that they have with the uh, soccer academy in China? Yeah. Um... I'm not sure exactly on all the specifics on how they exactly partnered or tag teamed. Um, but f- from what I do know is that Ning, uh, Ning took Llama football, his academy and partnered it with FC Barcelona in Spain, uh, a lot in the same sense that he partnered with DBAT to do baseball. Um, FC Barcelona is one of the top three clubs in, in the entire world. Uh, so that name recognition and that name brand obviously brings a lot to it, just like DBAT does with baseball. Yeah, it's a, a great point to partner with uh, organizations that have had success uh, previously, and that's a great segue into basketball. And you duplicated the same success with basketball. Um, 2016, you established a basketball academy, and now you have 16 academies in 10 cities in China. It's just a phenomenal growth story co- combining uh, youth education and sports in China with that 1.5 billion person market. Uh, it's just such a great success story, Ning. Basketball in China, I think many, many people, they love basketball. Yeah, This game, uh, China have uh, 300 million fans. Yeah, So this program more easier. The business model... We only copy Lama is enough. Yeah, we use the same business model. Yeah, so he can develop more fast because, yeah, more people love basketball. So this is the reason why two years we we do Lama Soccer Academy more than three years. But uh, basketball they develop more fast. Yeah, only two years, ten cities. 16 academies until to December 2018. I think we will have more than 20 academies in China. I know in China, the NBA game is huge. Uh, Yao Ming comes to mind. LeBron James. Yeah. Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. yeah. How about the college game? Is the, the U.S. college game uh, important in the Chinese basketball market? Do the Chinese youth follow the college game here in the U.S.? Uh, <coughs> yes. Yes. C-U-B-A. C-U-B-A. Yeah, it's a, it's a China college game. Yeah, the college league is the same to the, the NCAA. Okay. NCAA. Yeah. How about, are there any, <coughs> any youth fans in China that follow the U.S. college teams, like the Kentucky Wildcats, uh, the uh, North Carolina Tar Heels, the Duke Blue Devils, any fan bases in China that follow the U.S. college teams? Uh, in China, there are no U.S. teams in China. Not so many. Because in China, we have no chance to, to know NCAA. Yeah, probably no TV. Yes. No college games on TV. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, basketball can develop more fast. Another reason is uh, like soccer. In China, you know, China national team is no good. Yeah. <laughs> so Chinese, they love maybe Basi, maybe Spam, maybe German national team. They love different team. But uh, basketball, they already love NBA. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is the reason. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we but, bring some American coach to China. It's so easy to do the marketing. 
So let's fast forward to uh, January 2017, and I, I want to understand what you were doing in the U.S., but uh, we were talking a little earlier. Ning and Leon end up January 2017, you end up walking into DBAT, Temecula, California. Um, you had to have a, a master plan. Can you talk our audience through uh, how you ended up in Temecula, California, uh, January 2017? 2016, I plan to do baseball program in China, baseball academies in China. Yeah, some, some of my partners, they, they think this game, maybe in China now is only a little people yeah, love this. But I think this is uh, the best uh, time. Yeah, I think this is good chance. Now not so many people m- means good chance. So uh, 2017, January, yeah, January, I come to United States. Yeah, the first thing is uh, have the meeting with the USBA basketball program. Yeah, in Portland. The second thing is uh, I want to find some good baseball academies. It's lucky. Yeah, I when I stay in California. Yeah, one friend told me. Yeah. I know one baseball academy. That one is the best in United States. They open academy one day ago in California. I said, uh, "Can you bring me to that?" Well, that academy? was a fluke. Yes. D-Bat to make have been open one day. Is that right, Eli? One day. Yep. One day. Yes. They they showed up uh, at D-Bat to make grand opening. Yeah, I think we were talking to to Travis uh, earlier, and he said he was there. I'm sure Matt Hines uh, was out there. Kyle was out there too. Kyle Kyle, Griffiths. Yes. I, Kyle, uh, Kyle, like a standard there. He thought, right? Front desk. They thought Kyle was the front door man. Yeah. 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 (laughs) They didn't know Kyle was the COO of D Bad Academies. Yes. We don't know. Yeah. Sure. He probably greeted you with a big smile. You know, Kyle's very friendly. So yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. He said that he will introduce someone to meet with me in Dallas after two days. Because uh, after two days, he said he will come back to Dallas. We said that we will go to Dallas. So after we met in Dallas, we know he's the CEO. Before, <laughs> yeah. The second time we met, we don't know. Yeah. And then uh, just two months later, uh, March of 2017, you're right here in this building, uh, right outside of Dallas, Texas, and sign an agreement, uh, uh, master development agreement, to build uh, upwards of 20 DBAT academies in China. Can you share with our audience what your strategy will be, how many different cities uh, that you want to grow the DBAT uh, brand in China? In five years, my plan is 100 academies, but uh, two 2019, I hope her. My pl- I plan, I will build 20 economies in China. Uh, because now, more people, yeah, they start to care or learn baseball in China. In China, maybe we don't have enough baseball field, baseball pitch, but uh, more people start to, for example, uh, watch MLB game yeah in the by internet yeah so i think this is the chance for us like now we we build four economies in chen chongqing chengdu kunming and tianjin but uh, also another four cities we started to try to rent the place rent the gym for debat like beijing like suzhou like Jinzhou, like Jinan, yeah. Uh, also, more people they started to contact with Debat China. Said, uh, yeah, they ask, can we join with Debat? Yeah, I think uh, every week someone will contact with me. Yeah, with us. This is the reason why I think twenty academies is not uh, so difficult. Yeah, with 1.5 billion people, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of youth in China. A great market opportunity. Uh, we're excited for you. 
is part of the strategy going to be you're going to have to develop fields for the kids?